what up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to announce that Maxstone just recently updated the Cineware plugin for the direct link that will allow us to take animations with Redshift from Cinema 40 all to Unreal Engine. No exporting at all, no saving out any files, just a click of a button to send everything right over to Unreal Engine 5. Now, if you never used Cineware before, you have to go to the Maxstone website and you have to download the EXE installer, which is found here on the Maxstone website. So if you come up here to products, and then you come down here to Cineware. If you scroll all the way down, you should see the Unreal Engine logo in which you would just download it from here. And then you'll want to download the Cineware plugin for Unreal Engine. It's going to be an executable file. And if you have any trouble, I do have a full tutorial taking you step by step on how to properly install it. But it's an EXE file, so it should be pretty straightforward. And so to get started, we're in the latest version of Cinema 4D, which you want to have the latest and greatest for this to work. And so as you can see right here, I'm inside the viewport and I have this basic scene set up. So if you look over here, let me actually close out my materials here. But on the right hand side, you see I have gravity. I have a few boxes here and these are just for collision because I do have a MoGraph cloner that has all these coffee beans in there. So we can actually bring over a cloner with dynamics. If you look right here, I have a rigid body tag here that does all the simulation for us, which that's cool because we can bring over simulations along with keyframe animations of which I have a camera in here. And let me just actually play this through for you. So you can see we have the camera following the cup and we have the coffee beans being colliding with the coffee cup right here. And it's pretty simple, but the cool thing is all this stuff could come over to Unreal Engine all with just one click. We don't have to bake anything out at all, at least for the example that I did here. I was able just to bring this right over to Unreal Engine. Now, before I send this over to Unreal, I do have this right here in which this is everything stripped out. So once I actually did the simulation, like if I come here to my collider tag, come over here under cache and I cache the scene out and that's what allowed me to get my simulation the playthrough here, but then I deleted all the different assets that I didn't need anymore. So if I look back at my original project, I took out the gravity and then I also took out the cubes because I don't need these at all. I have my simulation already cached in. So that's going to help us bring this over even faster, just keeping in the items that we only need. So let's say this is your scene and you're totally happy with everything and you're ready to send this over to Unreal. What you want to do is come over here where we have extensions. You want to left click on this. And then we're going to come down here to where it says Unreal Direct Link. Now, the one we want to use right now is the Direct Link Sync. And we don't want to click on this button here. We actually want to click on the gear that's right beside it. So if I left click on this, this is going to come up with the Data Smith options. Now, by default, the animation is going to be turned off. But we want to make sure that we have this turned on. And then I'm going to leave these at default as well. Now, I'll link down the documentation down below to go through what everything means here, but I just like leaving everything at default because I do all my lighting and I do everything else inside of Unreal Engine. So once you're happy with your selection here, you're just going to click OK. And then you're going to see syncing animation down here. And while this is syncing, let me get Unreal Engine started up. Now, the Cineware plugin will work with Unreal Engine 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. But for the direct link stuff, you want to use the latest and greatest, which we're going to be showing here, Unreal Engine 5.3. So once you have it opened up, I'm just going to open up a basic scene here. So right here, film video on live events. I'm going to click on blank, and then I'm just going to turn on ray tracing, leave it on my desktop, and just click create. And once we have Unreal Engine 5.3 opened up, the first thing I want to do is come up here to edit, come down here to plugins and I just want to make sure that Cineware is properly installed in which if I type in Cineware you'll see Cineware by Maxon right here it's already clicked on if it isn't you want to make sure you click that on it's going to make you restart your project but once everything is good what we're going to do now is come over here to where we have quickly add to the project it's this cube here with the green plus sign you want to left click on this then we're going to come down here to data smith and we want to come down here to where we have direct link input now if I left click on this now this is going to bring up this window right here. This is direct link available resources in which is going to have listed your computer in which mine is the Puget Winbush and it's going to say it's coming from Cinema 4D and then the source is going to be whatever you named your Cinema 4D file. So make sure you have this selected and I'm going to hit select. And then this is going to come up just asking you where you want to save it in which I'm just going to put it into my default content browser right here. So I'm going to click OK. And then if you use data smith in the past this should look very familiar to you so it's going to ask you everything you want to bring over we want to bring everything over geometry materials lights cameras and animation and then down here under advanced we don't really want to mess with these at all I always just leave these at default so moving on i'm going to click input 
And once once it's done, now you see over here inside of our outliner on the right hand side, we have everything brought over from Cinema 4D, including all the coffee beans. So if I scroll around here, let me actually delete my floor plane here and delete some other stuff. Let me actually move over my outliner a little bit, double click on one of the beans just to get a little bit closer in here so we can see what's going on. But you can see we have our cup down here. Then we have our cloner with all the beans in here. And you might notice that the color on the beans are off a little bit. And also, if I click on my camera here, it's completely dark. Now, there's an easy way to fix all these. If it does come in like this, we'll start with the camera first. So if I come right here, scroll it up with my camera still selected inside of search. If I type in EX and then come down here under exposure, if I turn off metering mode, that automatically will fix our problem there. I'm not sure why it comes with this turned on, but that's just something that if it does, that's how you fix it. And then also you can see that it's out of focus in which we never messed with the focus inside of Cinema 4D. So what we could do is actually come over here and we'll just look for the focus settings, which is right here. And with focus method, instead of manual, we're going to left click and come down to disable. And that's going to bring everything in focus here. Now you can mess with the focus settings if you want there, but I'm just going to leave it disabled right now. So everything is sharp. Now let's move on to the textures. Now, if I look over here inside of my content browser, you can see that we have several folders in here that came over from Cinema 4D. So if I click on textures here, you can see these are all the textures that came over. But if I click on materials, these are the actual materials that are used in those textures. Now, if I double click on this first one here, that's going to bring up our material node in which right here under global, the very first one use reflection color. I'm going to turn this off and you can see right off the bat, it fixed our problem there. So I'm just going to do this for the rest of them as well and just save them out. And there we go. So now we have our texture on our coffee beans there and everything looks good. Now, the next thing you're going to want to see is if the animation came over in which down here inside of our content browser, you can see we have an animation folder down here as well. So if I double click on this, that's going to bring up our level sequence. And if I double click on this, this is going to open up our sequencer. Now, if I scroll up my sequencer like so, you can see that we have keyframes for everything that was in there. So all of our dynamic on our coffee beans, each one of those came over with its own set of keyframes. And then if I come right here where we have like this upside down pyramid, if I left click on this and come up here to cameras, that's going to filter out our camera so we can see exactly what's going on here. Now, it doesn't matter which one you select, but I'm going to select this top one here so that we're looking through the camera. And then if I click on play, you can see our animation came over directly the way that it was done inside of Cinema 4D. Now you can see that the frame rate came over as well, which I had 24 frames per second. And then it's also an HD because I did 1920 by 1080. So that's basically it right there. So all of our animations came over from Cinema 4D, our texture, our dynamics. We didn't have to bake anything out. Everything just came over as is. Now, I know a couple of months ago, Maxon actually implemented direct link into the Cineware plugin, but before it only allowed you to bring over a static mesh. And so a lot of people were complaining that they wanted animations. They just didn't want to bring over static meshes. So hopefully this update will help you guys out and get you on your way. So of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.